guys. I guess I'll go through the laundry list of things you're gonna need from tools and parts. Um, as you see here, I already have the uh, pistons dismantled. I will show you further along what it takes to get to this step. Um, so you got your respective pistons, all numbered for the respective cylinders. One being closest to the timing belt, four being closest to the clutch. Um, all respective wrist pins, do not swap any of these parts, make sure everything stays in the right order and the right direction. In other words, this wrist pin is meant to go that direction in this piston, particularly. Don't swap anything out, make sure you keep everything in order. Um, circlips for the pistons, obviously the uh, connecting rods, integrated engineering connecting rods. Alright, moving on, we got a um, brand new set of piston rings. Um, homemade ring filer I made, basically just a three inch cutoff wheel mounted to a thread aluminum block. Um, definitely a must have, should be a ring expander. Um, you don't want to risk breaking the rings trying to spin them into place. I definitely suggest buying this, it's like an eight dollar tool from Harbor Freight. Just get that for insurance. Um, this is a must-have. This happens to be Permatex Ultra Slick Engine Assembly Lube. You can buy this at Advanced Auto Parts. Um, I definitely recommend this over oil um, upon assembly because it is much thicker than oil and during your initial startup it will definitely protect all parts much better than typical conventional oil would. Um, don't mistake that for this ARP assembly lubricant, which is a molly based lube, um, this is only meant for the ARP fasteners. Do not use that on any of the contact surfaces anywhere in the engine where things will not seat properly. So this is only meant for that. Use this um, engine assembly lube for every other part, every other metal contact surface. Um, rod bearings. You've got um, plastic gauge here. We happen to use the green, which is tolerance between one and three thousandths that's um, available at Napa or a local machine shop might have that. Um, feeler gauges, good set of picks. Um, you might need dial calipers. Um, magic marker, Sharpie in particular, and a drill bit. You'll see what I'll be using that for. All right, moving on. Um, this happens to be a brush research three and a quarter inch. 180 grit silicone carbide flex zone tool. It produces an RA spec between 20 and 25 RA, which is what the ring manufacturer calls for. Um, keep in mind, these happen to be more delicate than um, a stone hone. It will produce um, a finer finish per grit. Like in other words, this is 180 grit. Um, it basically produces the same finish as maybe a 220 stone or a 250 stone um, for the lubricant. We're utilizing uh, just standard automatic transmission fluid. Don't use oil. Make sure you use ATF or a provided flex zone lubricant. Um, you got a whiz. Gasket remover definitely helps take the head gasket off the block in the head. Um, loosens it up real well. Brake clean, obviously. Hammer. Piston ring compressor. Um, a good torque wrench. Um, and this in particular is probably the ideal tool for removing head gasket material. It's called um, a 3M Rolock bristle disc. Um, the yellow is actually meant for cleaning um, aluminum. This will probably um, do a lot less damage than you could with this or a razor blade. Um, some people are, are confident enough with a razor blade or one of these discs. Um, so I'd recommend that if you can't find these Rolock discs anywhere. Just be extra careful and make sure you clean everything extremely well after you use something like this. Um, people tend to use the red ones for the block and a green one for the head. Um, but I'd recommend you clean everything extra carefully because it will leave some uh, aluminum oxide residue. Um, so do your best to clean afterwards. Alright, a few odds and ends. Um, got an MJM timing belt kit. Got a new water pump, new timing belt tensioner, new timing belt, new accessory belt, new head gasket, uh, new head bolts, and you're also going to need to get a head bolt tool. This happens to be a Matco tool. Um, 
I'd recommend break-in oil. This is non-detergent SAE 30. Um, definitely recommended for break-in. Apparently the, the non-detergent oils prevent um, uh, material wash away which actually helps seat everything nice. Um, so definitely without a doubt use a non-synthetic um, conventional oil upon uh, break-in but a lot of people recommend that it also be non-detergent. And uh, some G12 coolant and I guess a set, a thorough set of tools, uh, ratchet set, whatever you need.